Hello. How are you doing? Pretty good. How are you? Good. <laughs> Hello, good morning. 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 Hello. 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 Should we get started? Uh, you're very quiet, Rita. Oh. Can you all, do you all think I'm really quiet? <laughs> What's this? I can hear you fine. Oh, maybe. I all just right. said turn my speaker volume. Yeah, I, I turned the volume up. I don't know if other people are quiet too or not. Um, is it better? Can you hear me? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Then... Nice, nice shirt, Rita. Huh? Nice shirt. The... Teams. Teams? Uh, amour? Amour? Isn't that like, like French? Yeah. That's uh, love, or right? Romantic? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Seems appropriate for today. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's what I mean. Good catch. Yes. All right. Uh, shall we get started? I know we have a lot to talk about. So, um, I do we want to start with the first item first, or um, I just want to do a really quick demo uh, since we missed it last week. Sounds good. Let me share my screen. Do you see my screen? Yep. Yeah, we see your terminal. Okay, good. Um, all right, let me... Okay, so this is basically off of that PR um, that I have right now, um, but just Real quick. Oh, sorry. Um, uh, so basically, here I have Gatekeeper, and um, we're going to go ahead and create a constraint template that has the uh, um, the annotation. Sorry, the the label. I'm sorry, I am still like kind of uh, 
context switch here. But basically the way to kind of opt in um, is by adding this label to let Gatekeeper and Controller know that um, you want to also create the, the VAP resource, right? Um, so when that happens, uh, it basically creates this new VAP resource um, and it's using the prem kind. Um, it looks for the constraint resource actually. Uh, so let's say policy. Uh, so just let's take a look at what it looks like. Um, so this is what it's generated. Um, uh, and as you can see, it has the owner reference, right? Um, the constraint template is the is the owner reference. So when we delete or update or whatever, uh, sorry, when we delete, it will definitely delete this resource as well. Um, and when that constraint template is updated, it will also uh, propagate the change to the VAP resource here. Uh, and then as you can see, um, currently it defaults to all resources all operations, um, and then the expression is is where um, uh, it gets translated from the uh, the the Wu engine in in the framework uh, to what is now expressions as part of the VAP resource. Um, okay, so now we're ready for the binding, um, and this is really no different than. Just so y'all can see what this looks like. This is obviously the constraint uh, resource. You're very familiar with this. Um, and uh, oh, yeah. uh, and then for this resource, uh, as you can see, it also has the label. Uh, and when not, no label is selected, it will basically inherit from the constraint template. Uh, and then here, as you can see, um, it basically says I'll block anything, uh, any namespace that doesn't have this label. And then um, let's see if we have, oops. So this is the actual binding. And if we take a look at that, Uh, as you can see, the owner reference is the constraint resource, uh, and then uh, and then these are the validation actions uh, propagated from uh, the constraint, uh, and then the policy itself has a gatekeeper prefix. All right, um, okay, moment of truth. Let's see if we could create a namespace. Of course, it gets rejected from validating policy of this type, and the binding is here and it gets the um, the properties from the constraint itself uh, that we have defined here. Uh, all right, any questions? All right, um, I, I could do like, uh, you know, updating the the labels just so you y'all can see the um, yeah, I'd be curious to see um, the updating the constraint template out from under the constraint. Yeah, absolutely. Give me one second. Um, wait, so I have this guy here, so I'm just going to go ahead and um, I can either comment out or I can say no, doesn't really matter. Um, so if I do this. Uh, it would just update it, right? Um, so when that happens, uh, the, the policy, oops. The policy should be gone, 
Um, and the binding, it takes a little bit of time, but eventually it's gone. Um, so it, so this part is pretty cool. Um, we, we never had it before. Uh, the change from the constraint template actually gets propagated down to the constraint. Uh, let's see. It should be gone eventually. Hmm. Anyway, so if I do create namespace, it should. Oh, okay. Never mind. It's this webhook is kind of doing weird things. Um. Okay, the binding is gone now. Yeah, I don't particularly love the delay, but it doesn't. It shouldn't matter to the user because without a policy, the binding doesn't really do much. So. Any questions? Uh, yeah. So it's just uh, so it looks like it reverted to the webhook, but the for some reason the the webhook is admit label is is not working. Are the pods yeah. healthy? What's that? Are the pods healthy? The uh, gatekeeper pods. Yeah, but my this might be a separate issue that has nothing to do with this. So. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Um. But yeah, that's the that's the demo. We can move on to the next topic. Nice. This is very cool. Thank you. Thank you, Hal, for the work you. He did in the framework. It's pretty nice. Yeah. And I mean, um, we still have a long way to go. Um, yeah. yeah I, there's, uh, I need to do some more stuff in the framework around detecting whether or not it's an admission request, right? Yep. Yeah. But that's, that's not a blocking thing. So we are OK. No, not for your PR. No, in fact, uh, your your PR is required before I could do anything about that. Yeah. yeah. Alrighty. Uh, how do you want to handle the tests in the retest PR? Um, right now, I comment out all the constraint related PRs um, because I didn't because of that bug that had to do with how VAP is looking for the param kind resource. Um, it's fixed in upstream, um, but it's it's gonna take a while for it to make its way to a Kubernetes release. Uh, so until that happens, I, you know, we, we can't really use that because it would, it would actually fail um, because it can't find the constraint resource for the CRD, uh, and then it would basically block everything. Is it, uh, is it cherry picked the for the older versions? I think you said yes, right, before? For older version? Um, I'm yeah. not sure. I have to follow up on that PR. I, I would imagine so, because this got introduced in 128. I said, otherwise, we would have to wait for a long, long time. Um, That's right. So, yeah. So I, for, oh, sorry, go ahead. So for other people who may not be aware of the bug, it is it, um, in VAP for param kind, you can basically specify, get the parameters from this like config map or whatever, right? Um, but one of the features is you can specify a custom resource. Uh, to be used for parameters. And in our case, we basically say, hey, for parameters, parameters look for this constraint kind, right? But obviously there is a, a bit of racing condition um, where, you know, as we are creating the binding, um, the constraint, that's that's when we can actually have the, uh, the constraint resource that it will be used to look up the parameters, right? Um, so when that happens, VAP basically says, oh, can't find a, a resource of this kind. So I'm just going to, like, the validation will just fail. So that's pretty nasty. Can we uh, mitigate that by using a failure policy or even with failure policy, ignore it would still yeah. be an issue? 
I think we can. Um, I just need to kind of test it to make sure um, it actually does what it says it's going to do. And I have a few more uh, like ideas, just thinking out loud. Would it make sense to add like retries or like some sort of art artificial delay? Um, no, the problem is the retry is happening on the VAP controller. The, that's the bug, right? Is that it wasn't doing retries properly. And I thought because this was because we are creating the, the CRD uh, sorry, the, the VAP and then the web, web binding at the same time. I think this happens even with a healthy cluster if the API server restarts, That's you were right. saying. Oh, I see. Okay. When it sees both, both objects in the, at the right. same time. So this is not a gatekeeper bug. It's, it's, a, it's because VAP controller doesn't refresh enough to look for the custom resource. That's, that's where I, the way I understood it. So if you did this with your own custom resource, you you can hit this bug very easily. I see. That's a good point from Max. Like if you restart the API server, because both of the objects would be there. Uh, I'm, Rita said that to me uh, oh, okay. uh, when she told me about this. Yeah. That, that, that's pretty scary bug actually. Uh, does it go away eventually, or is it always like that? Um, that well, the the that's the problem, right? Is it doesn't update enough. Oh, I see. Yeah. It it goes away if they fix the bug. <laughs> it goes away eventually if you fix right. the bug, right? So like there's no update today, like before before the fix. Yeah. I should say that. Yeah. So the TLDR here is um yeah, let's let me look into the failure policy, see how we can maybe utilize that. Um but the failure policy right now is just fail. So are Max, are you suggesting for now we just Say ignore. Yeah, and maybe maybe this is a signal that we want to give users the ability to specify their failure policy anyway. Um, oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and it it is it is kind of interesting. Like, what is the benefit of using VAP with a failure policy of ignore relative to a webhook? If you're gonna have a webhook anyway, right? Like you have some referential constraints or whatever, uh, because I would think that the benefit of built-in is uh, basically you could fail closed without a lot of those like oh, extra yeah, concerns. I mean, um, this is just because of the bug, right? If it's not the bug, I think having failure policy fail is is, is okay. Right, right, right. But I'm saying I'm I'm just thinking about the value of having a knob post bug, oh. right? If, if we were to create a knob now, um, I mean, I think we should expose the knob because the knob is there for VAP. So we're just we're we're just passing it through. That's all. Yeah, and at what granularity, uh, too? Right, like we could globally set it for all things or make people be able to set it on a per template, maybe a per constraint basis, depending. I forget if you have one that lives on the binding. Um, well, it's on the VAP policy, uh, sorry, failure policy is at the VAP level. Uh, you, you, the, there's no failure policy also on the binding. Uh, I don't, let me read, I don't. There is validation action, which is deny. So you could have deny or audit, I think. And warn. Uh, right, like, but it's not the same as failure policy. Failure policy is at the VAP level. Gotcha. OK. Uh, so it would be just at the constraint template level then. Um, interesting. Yeah. Uh, I had some thought, but it, it left me. Um, yeah, the, yeah, I, I forget. Yeah, no worries. Uh, anyway, we can definitely we definitely need to follow up on this to to provide a good end to end. Um, this is just a preview. So. 
All right, with that, let's go to the next topic. Enforcement actions. Oh, I have my cat. <laughs> Yeah, I think you com uh, you replied on my comment and TLDR was to ignore the uh, name of the enforcement points that we don't know about and I, I'm good with that. Uh, and I think I you had some comment left on, on Rita's question as well. Yeah, can we share the screen yep. so people can see the the comments? Mm. Yeah. Just give me a minute. Okay, cool. Wait, yeah. Yeah. So, my question was like, since we are, uh. Yeah, since we are saying that this name could be anything rather than audit getter and something that we think of, like it could be name of the policy itself, right? That we don't control. Uh, and you, how how would we evaluate it? And it makes sense that for the ones that we don't know about, we can just ignore, uh, like handle it in the code. And if we don't find a policy of that name, we can just ignore and that that makes sense. Uh, what was Rita's question? Yeah. How can this be validated? Uh, yeah, this, so that's the, the contents of match. Uh, so I, I had kind of two thoughts there. One, I had this, uh, long comment that kind of like moots uh, the idea of putting match there. So I'm actually not in favor of what I proposed uh, after I had some time to think about it. Uh, two, if we did want to do it, we could validate uh, the stuff. Like this is, uh, it's, it's the same sort of shape that we use for uh, basically the validating engine source code in the constraint framework. We could leverage something like that here uh, without having a, a strict schema for match. So you, you wouldn't be able to use open API schema to do the validation. It would be uh, just a wide open object, but gatekeeper itself could. Um, yeah, but that being said, I think it's moot because I actually wouldn't put match here. I might still want an object that's worth debating uh like having name 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 just to leave room for configuring an enforcement point if that ever becomes salient um but you know we could think about other ways that could look too so um do do we think like other than match, if there is a need for additional uh structured input for enforcement points? Because if not, then we can just stick to error, right? Like and then keep it unbound. Uh, rather than like having an array of structured field name something name something name something. All right, and so the, for that, I would I would ask like what are the things people could see happening in the future, right? Like, if we want to have something like a, a pub sub, is that more associated with the action or is that more associated with the enforcement points? Uh, if we wanted to, or, or could you imagine some kind of configurable enforcement point, right? Like, obviously, webhooks, uh not so much but um you know maybe what what could be an example of a configurable enforcement points um uh the cli uh maybe you want to configure the 
deny reaction or uh, action for a specific constraint, right? So rather than just <laughs> uh, putting out a uh, uh, return code, maybe you also want it to, to ping your speaker or something so you know something's really bad. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of reaching, but I haven't given this problem much thought, right? Like what are the possibilities here? with regard to enforcement points and what do we want to make sure we could do if we wanted to in the future. If there are no objections on keeping it uh, an area of like structured thing, we can always like uh, add more fields to that already existing structure and not go through this exercise of converting array to structured array once more. The converting area of string to a structured error. I'm fine with that. Uh, yeah, that's that's basically the the thrust of my point is array prevents all this stuff. Uh, list of objects doesn't, and whether that matters depends on if we ever want to use it. So if we're fine with array, yeah, or sorry, list uh, list of objects, yeah. Any any other thoughts? Do Rita Sirtesh, do either of you strongly dislike the list of objects? Um, I mean that works for me. Um are, are we good with that approach um, for everyone? Uh, can you update the example then? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll update the example. Uh, I already updated the example. Okay. Uh, this is, yeah, uh, okay. so it will, it will look like something like this. Okay, and then, and then we would look up the enforcement points to do the validation? Uh, well, so, so for either one, um, validation I don't think is really on the cards as far as Gatekeeper itself is concerned, uh, because the idea is that we don't necessarily know all of the enforcement points uh, ahead of time. That being said, I, it should be fairly trivial for people to who who do know the shape of their own infrastructure to to do whatever validation they require, right? Like users should know the list of the enforcement points they expect to see, right, and should be able to throw an error if there's any um, string there that they don't recognize. Uh, they could also, you know, if there's an uh, enforcement point that they don't see that they do expect to see on all of their constraints, right? Th throw an error. Um, I think if we wanted to have some kind of feedback for users, it, it we could write to the status field of the constraints uh, if there is an enforcement point gatekeeper didn't recognize, like say, ah, we don't recognize this enforcement point or, or um, you know, put a metric on there or maybe label um, unrecognized enforcement points so users can see if they have any that gatekeeper doesn't recognize. Um, I think we also have the pre-existing behavior, right? With Is that just for enforcement action? Right, yeah, we, we haven't had uh, enforcement point yet. Like if if you really wanted, we could we could do the, the thing we did with enforcement action where users throw a flag and gatekeeper stops rejecting stuff with unrecognized enforcement points. Yeah, I think 
Well, uh, my concern was more about the validation of what is applicable to a to an enforcement point. When you say what is applicable, what do you mean? Like which actions are associated with which enforcement points or? Yeah, like not all, well, sorry. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to remember what I wrote. Um, uh, yeah, I was more saying the, the, the stuff under the match field, like wouldn't even make sense if it's like, not applicable to some of the enforcement points. Yeah, so so one I wouldn't I I said I don't actually think we should have the match field there anymore. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, definitely read through that comment or there's a doc I'm going to introduce after this. Okay. Um, that says that. So I would strike the match thing. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, if we were to leave it in there. Basically, every enforcement point would be responsible for doing its own validation, right? Yeah. It'd be like, oh, I'm on the hook for evaluating this match. Uh, does it make sense to me? And it would just ignore, like, Gatekeeper would go, well, I'm not Gator. I'm not going to look at that match. That's how I would do that if we wanted to keep it. OK, that's. That's fine. Um, and then, so, okay, so really that proposal is no longer valid. It's the, the, the one on the bottom, right? Yeah. Um, okay, so enforcement actions and, okay, and then we're, but in Gatekeeper, are we still doing the validation to make sure we error out if a particular action doesn't make sense for that enforcement point, like the, the mapping don't make sense? I think that that can make sense to do. Um, I, I see no issue because now we are explicitly associating an enforcement point with an action uh, with doing that kind of validation. The one kind of edge case there would be if enforcement points is undefined or star or something like that, right? So we assume that all enforcement points match. Uh, I could see a user, if they're just like spewing their config everywhere, right? And they just sort of are like, well, hey, enforce what you know how to enforce, but I, I don't want to like filter out stuff you may not understand. Um, there I could see them expecting the apply to work uh, just so it doesn't mess with their whatever push flow they have, uh, but them being fine with feedback on status or in metrics so that, you know, if they took a closer look, they would know that things aren't applying. Uh, I don't know if we want to be that fancy. I, like, I definitely don't object. Uh, like, if, if we wanted to, say, do strict validation when Gatekeeper is named individually uh right on a on a particular uh scoped enforcement action making sure it knows the uh action that it's it's on the hook for uh but yeah dealing with star but is gonna record, be... I, I isn't star the same as enforcement action not scoped isn't the same as enforcement action, kind of. Uh, I would well. So the difference there would be if I wanted to use a combination of both, right? So let's say I wanted to, and and here I'm I'm going to pretend that there's a pub sub action just to have some action that it might make sense to do both for. Um, for all enforcement points, I want to uh, reject. But for audit, I also want to do a special pub sub for this event so that my security teams know this bad config actually made it on the cluster. Right There, I would use scoped enforcement actions, action deny enforcement point star, plus another action pub sub enforcement point audit.
I'm okay with this option. Uh, it sounds like Jay, you're you're good. Yep. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> I know it took us a while to get there, but it. I do think a lot of pieces uh, fell into place around this time. Uh, I don't think the design is super different than what we were thinking originally. Like um, the list of objects is maybe new, maybe not. Um, But I'm glad that we know that we're looking at VAP, for instance, and we know that there's this issue with uh, operations, right? Um, and I'm glad that we had uh, some time to think about a, a lot of these other use cases that I put my other dog in the context of this change. Uh, just, uh, order, I think the list of enforcement points was already there as one of the options before. The only difference is like we are separating out scoped enforcement actions. That's kind of a big difference. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, and some of this is like just the amount of knowledge you have when you make a decision. Uh, this is a uh, kind of an aggression, but have you guys ever heard of this? There's this like probability conundrum around this game show where you open three doors. Um, so uh, the game show is like there's three doors, there's a prize <laughs> behind one of the doors, and the contestant chooses a random door, and the host uh, opens up one of the other two doors to show where there's no prize. And then the question is, is it better for the contestant to change their guess after uh, the, the, the uh, host has opened the door or, or not? And it turns out you have a 66% chance of winning if you don't, or sorry, if you do change your guess versus a 33 if you don't change your guess. Uh, which is like super unintuitive because there's two doors, but it's it's kind of an example of what information gives you. Yeah. So I had one more subsequent question. Uh, yeah. uh, I looked at the gatekeeper code and how it works with frameworks, and it looks like all the constraints and everything is loaded up on on frameworks part and and from gatekeeper we just do review of this object right mm -hmm. but in doing so we don't pass like where is this request coming from audit getter or like webhook uh and and for that matter like how how do we communicate that enforcement do we do we communicate that enforcement point information from gatekeeper side or how do we how do we know to not review an individual object from frameworks side to not review okay yeah i mean there will need to be more api work done here uh for the frameworks for sure um i think there's multiple answers here. One, uh, we should be able to pass the enforcement point identity as part of bootstrapping uh, the framework. I think that'll be important for other things we may want to do in the future. Um, that doesn't necessarily help us here, because uh, you can imagine if a pod is doing both audit and validation webhook like users are serving everything out of one pod then that pod has two identities right they're going to be using the same constraint framework for both of those uh so i would probably add this as a functional option to uh what's the the command review review yeah and that review is get uh, review gets called from getter as well, right? So we can we can pass in as a parameter. Is that what you're saying? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, gator, we might not necessarily even need to pass it as a parameter. Um, I suppose you can get into backwards compatibility concerns. I'm not super concerned about this with regard to the framework. It's not a large change, and technically it's still an alpha thing. Um, but you, you could infer uh, with Gator uh, and not require it from review because it only has one identity, right? You could call it Gator CLI or whatever on startup. Uh, whether we should, I don't know, because that's asymmetric behavior. Fix setting default. Oh, wow. Yeah, sorry, looking at Sertesh's thing. But sorry, did uh, does that give you some guidance for thinking about it? It's not an answer, but it's. Uh, I don't, I don't get this. I, I would probably just require a uh, review to specify what enforcement point it's using in the short term. I'm sorry, could you, could you repeat that? I'm still processing all this information, so. Yeah, so I would make two changes to the constraint framework. One is on bootstrapping, right? When creating the constraint framework client, we should let enforcement points declare who they are, right? Say, hey, yep. I'm, I'm gatekeeper webhook and gatekeeper audit. Right, that needs to be possible to do. Uh, so they should have one or more values they could provide there. Uh, and the second piece is when they call CF client review, uh, require them, or actually, you know what? No, give them an option to pass their identity, right? So the webhook is going to say client.review add a functional parameter saying, by the way, I'm the Gator webhook. Yeah. Or a client.review, by the way, I'm Gator Gatekeeper audit. Right. Um, and if they don't pass that, assume they are all the identities they passed in, in when constructing the client. OK. And if they don't pass in anything, assume they're everyone. Right. Just like, yeah. You just match everything, I guess. Yeah, that makes sense. So, uh, okay, in doing so, like we are uh, saying technically the name could be unbounded and uh, the name could be a name of a, a, a VAP binding as well, right? The name of an enforcement point. Uh, VAP binding. So, so the, good. Yeah, in this uh, example that you wrote down on the doc itself, this is, I'm assuming, is a no, name. That, that's just uh, Kate's validating admission webhook. I, I I don't think we really bike shed it on the exact values of these names. Okay. I would suggest we, you know, use that whole host name stuff, right? Like kates validation .kates .io or whatever so that we have some kind of namespacing to avoid collision long term okay cool um... yeah i think i have enough to move forward now Yeah, and we could bike shit on the exact names on whatever PR. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, I had a side conversation I didn't want to interrupt um, on the chat. Do we want to revisit that PR? Um, yeah. Yeah. Are we okay uh, with deny there if we don't have the enforcement action? But that's just like the... That PR is only for uh, displaying it to the output, right? It doesn't change. Yeah, it's, it's just a cosmetic thing. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, but yeah. but with scoped enforcement actions, I I was just going to say scoped there. Um, huh? It's just going to say scoped in in that field. So this I is know, when but, you do. But for scoped, it's it's going to be many actions, right? So yeah, and it's just going to say scoped there. It's not going to describe each of them. This is just when you do kubectl get uh, constraints. Yeah. Ah, oh, okay, gotcha. This and is people called... can still do like the get constraint and then get the whole thing if they want. Is there ever a world where we wanted to get rid of scopes? Like if we could avoid, if we could go back in history and, and start with this design from the beginning, right? The scoped enforcement actions thing. Would we just have that or would we have what we're proposing now? where enforcement action needs to be scoped before we, or otherwise it's a singular field. So are you saying, uh, I'm, I didn't get this question, but I'm just asking to more clear, for more clarification. Are you saying we should only do scoped enforcement action for constraint? Uh, I'm saying that I can see a world or a path forward where we remove in this single enforcement action field if we want to and make everything enforcement actions. There's ways to avoid backwards compatibility concerns that I could get into. Uh, so if we wanted to do that, uh, we could. And if we did do that, then this whole column is moot. Um, so my question would be, do we like the fact that there's by default a single field for enforcement action, or would we rather it just be that th this new scoped enforcement actions field, obviously called something different, but. In my opinion, I think the, the single action is really a nice experience if you don't care about the granularity, right? I, and the fact that having it in, you know, get constraint in the CLI, it's very obvious. It's it's a it's a good experience. And I believe this was one of the things that was called out from Kai Vernal as something gatekeeper doesn't do or something something like that. And so while I think for extensibility scope does provide more flexibility, I still see the, there's a world where people don't care about the granularity and a single action is very easy to get started with. Uh, what did Caverno call out again that we don't do? I forgot. It's something about like, you know, you don't see stuff in the CLI. Oh. Of the CLI, yeah. Gotcha. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, that's a, I, I do like the UX somewhat. Um, I, I don't sure I have a strong opinion either way. Um, any other thoughts? I, I just want to, again, mm -hmm. like, I don't think to, to address the, the, the need of some users, we shouldn't remove the simplicity that we already have that, that that's all my only point yeah yeah i mean my counter simplicity argument would be well now we have more fields and that's more complex and you have a relationship between fields um well if you care about the simplicity you don't even care about the scope thing <laughs> if, if you need the scope thing that's where you you, you have to deal with the complexity in which case you you're probably okay with because you need the granularity so it's it's sort of expected to be complicated more complicated than like the the the, the easy button solution yeah and but i'm just devil's advocating i'm not like arguing strongly here all right yeah uh it sounds like no one else has strong opinions on this topic is that are you okay to like Add enforcement action de deny as a default thing, or no? Yeah. So, so the reason why I asked the question is that people are like, oh, ah, yeah, I would rather get rid of it than I would get rid of the whole column, right? 
because then there'd be a world where that column makes no sense for yeah for but that'd be a breaking change i think the the, the for to remove the col column that that's a like a bigger task because it would be changing the default behavior in the i guess i don't see i like is this part of the api or or is this like just porcelain is this more like ui you know so, oh, so Max, are you uh, are you suggesting it to remove from the output of cube cutter uh, get constraints or just no, no, no. deprecating I, the I, whole field itself? Uh, I was saying if we ever wanted to deprecate that singular field, then we should just remove this column because it's going to okay. stop being relevant. Um, but I think I for them, think we need to come up with a V two constraints or something like that because that that, that would be a breaking change. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And and I think we're going to need to do that anyway uh, at some point. I'm, I have a doc after this. Um. <laughs> I had a separate conversation. Yeah. Um, okay. So, all at, so maybe we'll table it again after the other conversation? Oh no no! I think if we like scoped enforcement stuff, then we could just keep it. Like oh, no, the scoped we are good. I think we're talking about the the, the adding enforcement action deny. Oh no! I think we're good with that too. Like if we oh, like okay. this model and we'd want to keep it, then we like it and we want to keep it. Awesome, cool. I I, I think that un unpauses your PR then, uh, Jay. Yeah, I'm gonna rebase and then. <laughs> Yay. Yeah, finally. <laughs> Making progress. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, so this one, this came from thinking about VAP, specifically the delete problem with VAP. Uh, I, I think one thing I would probably change in the near term is not generate uh, a delete matcher for VAP by default, uh, because that's somewhat surprising behavior in a lot of ways, right? For, for most constraints, that's unexpected and unwelcome, right? You can imagine you have an invalid resource, and you're like, well, let me fix it. Uh, and you try to delete that invalid resource, and it gets denied because delete is applied, um, which is kind of the opposite of the goal for, for most policies. There's some policies that are, no, don't delete this thing. And that's why they wrote them. Uh, but then that kind of gets to this like weirdness that we've had for a while, right? Uh, I don't want to like necessarily discuss this dog. This is more just announcing it. Uh, Cause I think this also at the bottom and toward the execution plan, I think I unblock all the concerns that might be blocked by this, uh, if we're okay with this sort of roadmap going forward. Uh, but you know, there's this core weirdness where users have no way, particular constraint users, to match against certain fields, right? Like that that are in the request object, right? Like the requesting user or the sub resource of um, what's being created for like pod exec. Uh, and, you know, it, operations could also be salient if you uh, enable delete for gatekeeper, right? And right now the escape patch is, well, hey, you can just go and write some Rego. Right, and and you have access to the request object there that'll fill in the gaps, which is it's good that there's an escape hatch, but I think there's some inconsistency in design principles here, right? Like we're kind of saying we're keeping the match criteria to only be stuff that can evaluate be evaluated for resources at rest, so that match criteria will work also for audit. And for um, uh, uh, the Gator CLI, but then you also have these constraint templates, right? That just won't work for those anyway, 
right? And you've got authors or constraint template authors that then need to run tests against the object that is being inbound uh, to see, well, am I operating in an audit context? So maybe I don't want to evaluate this constraint like at all because I don't have the information or, or whatever, right? And so they're, they're checking is certain field defined or, or not defined, uh, which is not really the intent of target, right? The, the hope of target was that users or constraint template authors would know what they're evaluating against, right? So they could write their rules with some level of confidence. And I think uh, the thing that's at the root of all of this is that target handlers are not nearly specific enough or gatekeepers target handlers not specific enough, right? Like we try to make it a thing for all seasons where if you bring it a constraint or sorry, an unstructured object, it'll, it'll make a pretend request so that it kind of looks right, right? Uh, and if you bring it a request, it'll just pass it through wholesale. But it's matchers pretends like, no, 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 it's, it should only be objects at rest. Uh, so this doc basically looks at what if instead we had two targets, right? One that was specifically about validating resources at rest and another one that could validate resources on the API server and it experiments with, okay, well then how do you, or sorry, validate resources as part of an admission request. Um, and it looks at how can you make those at rest constraints still useful in an admission context? What does it look like from a user experience? What primitives, uh, extra primitives might we need to make all this possible? Um, and how might we migrate it? And then finally, it looks at uh, if we have this plan, like what does it unblock? One, it renders my first thing on JDIP stock moot. Uh, two, I think it lets us have a path forward for matching against request verb uh, and requesting user that users can use. And three, I think there's a way to even make this like user friendly, right? Where for the most part, everyone can kind of ignore, oh, what context did the constraint template was it written in, right? Or or where is my constraint template going to be used? Like right? all that is actually more true after this than it was before. Yeah. And so uh, are there any questions? Uh, do people want to just like read it and see? Um, I'll take a look after I, I... I do have to go, but thanks for uh, thanks for sharing and starting the, the thought. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Most immediately, what I'm looking to unblock is VAP with this, right? If we can agree mm -hmm. on the approach, I would put a operations matcher in, and that would let us handle the delete case or give users a place to to put their intentions with regard to delete. Yeah. Let, let me think about this. Yeah. Okay. Thank cool. you. Let's mm -hmm. circle back next meeting. Let's give it some time to you. Bye. Bye. Bye.